this is my life. You know, I'm not Indian. I'm a mad Irishman and an Indian nightmare. You know, it's like getting over a drunk. The first thing you gotta do is confess you're drunk. And one of the hardest things for people to get over is their notion that they actually know how to live on Earth and deserve to be here. And um, you don't. You don't know how to live on Earth. You don't deserve to be here killing it. I go by Phoenicia Medrano. I was raised in Nevada, northern Idaho. I spent 30 years out here on horseback. Growing up on all that American propaganda about fields of grain, majesty, and we're supposed to take pride in our war against nature. But I was always a bit weird. When I was a child, about four, I used to steal the sheets off my grandmother's line because somebody told me about Pecos Bill being carried away by a whirlwind raised by coyotes. I thought that sounded better than what I had, so I would go out there and chase those whirlwinds. I'd jump up into them and I'd throw these sheets into the air. They were tied to my wrists, and I'd get spit out of that thing from about 20 feet up, you know, the desert floor full of dust and dirt. I'd be wiping that dirt out of my face looking for the coyotes at four years old, so I've always been kind of bent this way, but I think I saw too much of the real world, what you call the real world, to want to be in it. And there was no conscience in it all, so I decided I was going to try and find a way that was left a conscience. I come running out here looking for something that would give me a passage into this land. I met some Indians, and each one of them would share with me a part of these foods, you know, until I got to enough confidence, I just took off with that. We're down in Hills Canyon today, and uh, we're gonna bring these seeds here and take them into a drop camp so I don't have to pack them in later. In these bags, there's bags, and every one of them have different kind of lomation, look seeds, uh, biscuit root seeds, all that kind of stuff. And it's what was in this country before they plowed it out. If you just wait for this seed to be ripe, then you can dig them like crazy, and just by digging them, you plant them, right? Because you want to be in a place where every time you do dig, you're putting seed back in. I carry a seed bundle with me, a huge seed bundle, all the time. So that when I leave, I leave a garden, and I've done this for 30 years. Every place I've been, I've burned the ground with a campfire, that's a dead zone. And weeds can come in and who knows, it's going to pick it. No, I'm going to pick it. It's going to be this and it's going to be food. Miles of these camps behind me. Miles and miles and thousands of miles. It's been some pleasant trips, but there's several times I've been beat up by this country and swore never to go back into this damn canyon. You know, it doesn't take many acquaintances with a thing before you begin to understand it. How many dates do you need with a girl before you know if you like her or not, you know? If we took out and we were gonna go right to Nevada, nobody made it to Nevada. On the ride out, I got to where I couldn't chase after my horses. And so I had to have some cowboys come up and help haul my ass off the mountain, and that was hard. Giving up the horses was really hard. Um, giving up uh, that life way, though, and that that whole way of being, that was really tough. And so it's a real struggle. It's as much of a struggle coming into civilization as it would be for a civilized person to go out and live on a horse on a hoop. You squish a lemon, you get lemon juice, probably. You put pressure on a grape, you probably get grape juice. Pressure's gonna expose what's in you. It ain't gonna create it for you. And what I'm doing is I'm um, gonna take a trip uh, to Cedarville to visit with a friend, Michael. Uh, who has some land and maybe a possibility for me to be closer to the hoop and the things I've been doing. I'm driving down the road like a granny. I don't have a speedometer. I don't have a gas gauge. I got no, I got no gauges at all. Hey John, I got a flat tire. Really? You got AAA? Ben, what are you doing? Pissing right here in the parking lot. <laughs> In the end, I don't think I'm gonna end up with more understanding and forgiveness for the civilized mindset and the people. I'll probably condemn them more because I'll be able to look at them and say, well, I can do all of what I've done and I'm homeless without a job. I'm a transsexual that's overaged and sick. And I just finished planting, you know, 7,000 fucking trees and two acres of cameras. Tell me, tell me why I need to love you. Tell me what's so forgivable about living unforgivable. You know, I'm not gonna lose my religion in this move. No, I'm probably gonna be baptized in the fire of my own faith here. And that's disappointing because, you know, I like people. But the disappointing motherfucker I see around me ain't even human anymore. And I gotta go to these extremes. I gotta go have a sex change and grab a horse and run away just to find a chance for me to be human or try to be. 
something that's fucking life-giving. Something that wants to be a keystone species instead of getting its jollies just jacking everything to death.